Were you aware that Mr Dreyfus was seeking alternative legal opinions to your own when you were his Solicitor General? I have no knowledge on that fact. OK. So you weren't aware of that. Um, so Mr Dreyfus kept secret from you uh, that he sought legal advice on important politi political issues secret uh, from his frank and free or his top legal advisor. That's... Uh, you didn't know that, and Mr. I, I have no knowledge of the matter. So, you so just Mr. Put... Dreyfus kept that. Sir, from you. please let me finish. I make. I have no knowledge, and okay. I, make no, I make no comment upon the matter you raised in your last question. Would you have been concerned if you'd known that Mr. Dreyfus was seeking alternative legal advice to the advice you'd given him? Would you? Would you have been concerned? I'm not sure I'm in a position to comment. I'd want to know what the facts were. And let no, me, can I explain why? Can I explain why I'd want to know what the facts were? Let Mr. Gleason can I explain the question. why? Yeah. If I had provided an advice to any Attorney General, mm -hmm. and that Attorney General on due consideration considered the advice either overlooked certain matters or wrongly assessed a risk, and that Attorney General wished to revisit the matter himself or herself, mm, mm. potentially with or without the advice of someone from the private profession. As I've indicated in my earlier remarks, yes. I consider that would be within an Attorney General's ability to do so. The next question is, what communication ought there be between an Attorney General and a Solicitor General well, in those circumstances? Well, that's the question I've asked you. Please, you're here to answer my question. I, I, I'm afraid I am, sir, because you, the question but you my, asked... My question was simply... Mr Dreyfus has said publicly in this book by Professor Appleby that he did seek other advice uh, and uh, that he'd do it again. Uh, you said you didn't know he'd sought other legal advice. I'm just saying to you, would you have been concerned if, um, if, he, if you'd known he was seeking alternative advice to the advice you'd given? You've said, uh, uh, no, you wouldn't have been concerned. Is that no, correct? again, Senator, you have mischaracterised my answer. And, Chair, I'd like to be able to be given a chance to answer the question and not have words put back to me, which is not what I said. Well, Can Mr. I answer Gleeson, the question? You're, you're wasting Senator my time, and you know I have very limited time. Senator Can you McDonald, answer my please questions? please put the question to the witness and don't then re-characterise the witness's answer. Thank you, Mr Gleeson. The question that was put to me was, would I be concerned if that were to occur? And I was answering that question in two parts. Firstly, to recognise the right of the Attorney-General to seek that further advice. Then at the point I was interrupted, I was dealing with the second part of the question, which is what should be the communications between the, the Attorney General and the Solicitor General at that point in time as to that fact occurring. That I think is quite a fact-specific situation. It may depend very much on the nature of the matter. However, I, I would add this. In terms of the integrity of the uh, Commonwealth opinions of Solicitor General and Attorney General that I've referred to that goes back to Federation, there would obviously be a benefit in that second opinion being obtained by the Attorney General or adopted by the Attorney General, being placed with the database and communicated back to the Solicitor General for the very practical reason that if I was advising on a similar matter in the future, I would now know the authoritative opinion the Attorney General had adopted on that topic. 